Hello and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and this is episode number 729. That is 729 of the Agostino Zynga show with I, your host, Agostino Zynga, and I hope you are doing well wherever this lovely pod may find you. I hope you are doing swimmingly. How am I? All good, all things considered. I cannot complain. I could be a tad happier if United were actually playing better, but hey, I can't really, you know, hope and wish for everything. It kind of is what it is. The temperatures out here in London are dropping rapidly, um, you know, and it's not really nice out there, especially since I haven't decided what park or what winter jacket I'm going to be wearing for the winter, which is a bit late to decide, I understand, but it's going to be a cold ask few months and stuff, so I've still got plenty of time to decide what jacket, what coat, what parka, what you know bomber jacket what down jacket i'm going to be wearing for the next couple of months because trust me this winter isn't going to end anytime soon so the temperatures are dropping there's loads of freaks outside um it's getting dark really quickly and it kind of is what it is right sometimes i wake up in the morning and if i end up going gym in the morning the really early in the morning it's dark outside if i end up going gym really late at night it's really dark outside so it's kind of a crazy life to be living right so i'm, I'm almost nocturnal in that regard but hey it kind of is what it is you make do with what you have to do the one thing that was kind of surprising was it surprising but definitely something that gave me some food for thought was over the weekend ended up going to pirate studios for a little bit of a mix which was a good time you know always a good time to go to pirate studios and play some music in a loud room especially club music you know on that good equipment and whatnot and one thing that's for sure over the years i think we've definitely seen pirate studios you know gone up in at same popularity a lot more people know about that space and there is clearly a continued of people who probably decide to go and mix whatever and turn that mix thing into a little party which i do sometimes as well don't get me wrong but i think a lot of people decide to go to places like Paris studio rent out a little room to do a little mixing and they actually go and do that instead of going to clubs so it creates a weird environment there are people in there like me who want to practice and you know hone my skills and improve and record mixes so eventually i can get booked in these big clubs and stuff and there's other people that go in there primarily for like a leisure activity they're doing it exactly to you know to basically replace going to a nightclub which makes a lot of sense right because Paris studio is open 24 hours you can go there whenever you want they've got great flipping equipment it's like you know um they've got locations all over london i'm sure they've got stuff across the uk parts of europe and international and what it's a really cool system of how it works essentially you've got these little studio rooms that you can book out and you can kind of hire the space to kind of do your little thing that you do and if you've seen some of my mixes that i put together you would have kind of seen that i kind of hire these spaces to go out right it's called here you got it here on the site i can scroll down and show you what they look like and stuff right you've got different studios and their locations and whatnot so it's a pretty cool little place to go to right you've got dj dance all these little sort of spaces you can kind of go in right all flipping amazing right you can't really go wrong with it i absolutely love everything about it it's absolutely amazing but it's definitely turning into a bit of a hangout now it's turning into a bit of a social scene a bit of a place to to be seen and to just hang out and have a good time and i think with the way london clubs are it makes a lot of sense you know there's a lot of shit clubs here opening times are a bit strict drinking laws are awful whatever it may be but for someone like myself who's just going there to practice and use the equipment it's a real crying shame when you go there and you realize that all the equipment is starting to get absolutely torn to pieces because people are just like beating up the flipping decks they are beating up the flipping you know knobs and the sliders and stuff and everything looks absolutely horrendous like you go in there nowadays and legitimately the decks are like sticky you know they're absolutely sticky like you can't get past the fact that they're super super sticky and you can't really take a gamble on these places like you you, you don't know you know you don't know what you're gonna get until you flip and go in there so it's really really sad in that regard um but obviously the charge and the fees and stuff are really cool you don't, you don't have to pay too much to go in there um you get the tech sent to you so you can open the door and stuff so it's pretty you know seamless in that regard you don't have to actually talk to a human being in that regard it's really really nice to use but unfortunately now that it's become super popular the equipment is getting all smashed up i think we had to move one room to another room because one deck wasn't working correctly and then we go to the other room and the flipping buttons are a bit sticky and they don't really press right it's just it's just an awful place to be and now it kind of reminds me a lot of some of my earlier bookings i would get when i'd be playing in these clubs you know, in these bars right and these pubs and stuff and essentially you'd be having to you know you'd be having to flip in try to make the decks work 
just from what they were like sometimes the left deck wasn't working um and <laughs> you don't have to just make it work you have to kind of figure out a way okay cool maybe the left deck doesn't have a q button or the q button doesn't work properly so you have to just press play and you know whatever from that way or sometimes the q and the play don't work so you have to kind of you know drop the tracks in you know old school style like you're kind of mixing with vinyl all these type of things happen and you have to kind of figure it out at least with pyro you thought okay cool they've got all the best equipment in there you know they bow the be the best you know the best decks da, 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 da. it doesn't happen so maybe the only option to do now to going forward if you actually want to go and use the best equipment and make sure it's in the best condition is maybe just to book the pro rooms they're a bit more expensive but as you can see here they usually have free decks you usually get the option to have a dj sorry a cdj 2000 and also 3000 nx and nx nx s20 sorry and of course you get the latest um you know mixer as well but the main thing is the decks because the decks in the regular standard room are so beat up they're so haggard nowadays it's fucking crazy um the last time i actually went there there was actually a security guard there nowadays like you know patrolling the corridors and looking at his tablet and seeing what time people are in and what time they're meant to be leaving it's a bit nuts man so it's definitely not a free and easy chill out places once it was i think i've heard the location in dawson i've heard absolutely goes crazy there they've got actual security guards there in terms of patrolling the area because it gets a bit wild people fighting people going a bit nuts but i think it's all kind of a testament to how shitty our nightlife scene is in london that people are now turning a studio space into a de facto club it's a bit sad really <laughs> to be honest but i completely get the desperation that people have so it kind of is what it is it kind of is what it is Moving on, I also saw this post courtesy of Outlander magazine on Twitter regarding ASAP Rookie doing a campaign for Bottega Veneta. And I was wondering, I was really curious as to like, what, I wonder where, what kind of stage of his career Rocky is in at the moment, because it seems like he's purposely taking a step back from putting out music. I think the last album he put out might have been like testing. And that might have dropped, I think, 2019 or 2018 or something, right? So it might be going into like, what, six years or something, right? Since he dropped his last album or something, which is pretty crazy when you think about the, you know, the standard of, you know, rapid that he is, the level that he's at, the kind of music he puts out. To take that long to put out music is kind of wild, but it seems like it's clearly a strategy that he's doing. And he's maybe pivoting away from dropping music and deciding to be more of a, like a fashion influencer, which is obviously, you know, it kind of is what it is. But I just think considering his musical talent, it's such a waste of, you know, ability of artistry to just decide to just take your foot off the pedal on the metal, or sorry, take your, your foot off the pedal and decide to just pivot into doing the fashion thing when the music stuff is just so good really when he does drop you know again maybe his albums are a little bit inconsistent but it comes when it comes to the sounds when it comes to his stage performances when it comes to the, the music videos and stuff some of that stuff is really really well done but i'm just not sure this is maybe the right or the correct or the smart play long term really because he could easily be dropping music at the same time but it seems like he's purposely decided to you know pivot away from music and do more of the fashion stuff which for a fan like myself it's a bit annoying and it kind of reminds me a little bit of what happened to asap nast from asap mob um he was one of the people that, who i always thought asap nast after probably rocky was probably the best in the group even before ferg i always thought nast was probably one of the really undercover um you know dope artists and rappers and stuff in say asap mob but he clearly doesn't really fuck with music that much he doesn't really care he's turned himself completely into like a fashion influencer consultant brand guy type of thing he does a lot of collabs i'm sure he does a lot of consultancy in the background and shit he's on probably a bunch of mood boards and he doesn't drop music at all i don't think i don't, can't remember the last time he put out a single or even a song asap nast and um clearly that's a decision that he made early on which i guess there's some credence and there's some validity and there's some worthwhile to doing that right if you're an artist maybe that makes a lot of sense you should just like stop when you want to stop because i guess the worst thing that could happen to you as a musician or as an artist in any way shape or form is if you keep going but no one wants to hear what you have to say uh, there's probably nothing worse than indifference forget like your numbers dropping but just people just not caring either either way whether you drop or you don't drop so that makes a lot of sense because apart from me saying what i'm saying now i don't really think i've seen many people online clamoring or asking rocky to drop something right to drop a flipping single drop a music album i know he announced he was going to drop an album and he put that big video production thing together that you know again a bit of waste of time the music video was really good but the actual tune itself was a bit shit i think 
think it was for a riot, right? He put it out, and I think maybe that was like a maybe it was like a tribute to his kid or whatever that he um recently had. But I'm really kind of confused about his kind of pivot and what he's basically doing nowadays because it seems like he's definitely decided, hey, forget the music thing, let me just go down the fashion route thing. And you know, maybe this is the smart play long term. Maybe he's seen the tea leaves. Maybe he's got access to some numbers in the background that we don't have access to, and he's seen that people maybe just don't care about his music and it's not going off the way it should do. And he's decided, you know what? While I've got the ability to do so, while I'm married to a literal billionaire, um, and I'm starting a family with her, and I already got my life sorted out, why not just like take some chances, take my foot off the pedal when it comes to music, and pivot into the fashion thing? Maybe that's a play. But again, I just said it's just unfortunate because I think he's super good at music, really talented guy, crazy, um, creative, um, definitely got a gr great range, um, really good performer live. You know, I saw him at Primavera, and I was really impressed because I saw some other performances of him before, and I wasn't that impressed when I. I saw them on youtube and shit when i actually went to see him in person he was amazing live and you know you just forget how many hits he has so it's a real shame that you don't really hear much music from asap rocky because he's decided i guess to become like a full-time fashion dude which kind of you know why not if you can do it but i think you can do both at the same time but again maybe he's just seen the numbers and it probably just told him you know what i'm gonna leave it there and it's like yeah, people are saying in the chat as well yeah yeah didn't him asap ferg fall out um i don't really think so but maybe they did i think they do a good job to be fair asap mob do a good job of keeping their internal drama internal with the exception of that thing that happened at the moment where asap rocky is going to court for um allegedly shooting asap rally one of the founding members of asap mob um in the hand or something during an argument but for the most part you don't really hear a lot of infighting between them they've uh, they've had beefs obviously with other people but you don't really hear them beefing each other they kind of keep that stuff to themselves which is pretty good to be fair so maybe there is an issue but i don't really think so um there are i think i can't I remember the, actually i can't remember the last time i saw asap ferg and asap rocky together so maybe there might be something there i'm not really too sure but um and it was stephen castanet said asap lost the love for rapping since the yams passing yeah the, 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 that's a good point because that yams part you know asap yams passing you know r.i.p to him was definitely a pivotal moment i think asap mob never really recovered from that passing to be fair they were all grieving in their own way i think they dropped really one really good tape what um you know just after he passed up i think asap yams was involved in the creation of that tape i forgot which one it was and that tape was fucking incredible and since then they haven't really been a collective for a while and um, even someone like asap 12 yeah i've always been a big fan of him i think he's a really underrated rapper too but he doesn't really put out a bunch of music but maybe that was the goal in the end maybe the goal was all these guys from harlem didn't really have much came together and they probably quickly realized okay cool we're, we're all not going to be rocky let's not even try to be him because he's like a star clearly he's the star of the group but let's try and make something out of this so we can all just carve our own lane so we could all be like our own thing you know what i mean and they've got asap yaddy that's got that he's got that brand skateboarding brand. i forgot the name of it you got asap 12 i think he's also got a brand you've got the other dude um i think ills the mixed race dude he's got his own thing as well brand that he does they've all got their own little thing but it all came from that group of being an asap mob and you know pretending like they were a rap group but now they've all gone into doing their own thing and that's because they've all knew how to play their position so maybe that's the thing maybe asap rocky is a hey people don't check my music anyway let me just play my position and just do the fashion thing where i'm actually wanted because internationally like look he's the face of fucking protector panetta it's clearly he's got a lot of cachet there so that makes a lot of sense maybe that is a good option to go forward so let's see what it happens for him but again as a music fan i'm just a bit upset that i don't really get to hear a lot of new flipping music from him going forward because he's clearly decided to kind of pivot and change things and go to another direction which you know you can't really falter him for because when he does put that when he does put that shit on he does look really good in it like you can't deny when he wears certain bits of clothing unfortunately when it's not you know as long as it's not the puma stuff he definitely does look good in clothes that like you can't deny this guy definitely has got an eye for clothes and definitely somebody that once he puts clothes on it just fits him like an absolute glove so i can understand that and i can understand that moving on from that one i want to quickly mention and talk about george flippin santos who's just been expelled from the house <laughs> over criminal charges like it's been a long overdue i feel like every other day i was hearing his name in the press about whatever misgiving that he did and him talking to the press weird and you know walking up and down the flipping corridors of the house like a fucking supermodel right swinging his hips from left to right always wearing for some reason he always wears clothes that don't seem to fit He's a bigger dude and he has really tight jumpers, really tight blazers, fat all over the place. Like it's a strange type of guy when he kind of puts himself together. But anyway, I just like him personally as a person. Oh yeah, personally, I like him. 
because I feel like he's a representation of the American dream. He is what the American dream is, right? First of all, he's an immigrant. And second of all, he, you know, basically achieved, you know, something far outside of his probably IQ level or his like, you know, intelligence or his smarts, whatever it may be. He was able to achieve way more than he was probably <laughs> deserving to achieve that ability to get more out of life than what your actual talents are i think is probably the american dream like be able to get away with things and still be able to make money is definitely part of it and it's really interesting because he's been expelled over criminal charges right so i think he's gonna get charged i think next year or something but look at this other headline cuts of variety george santos movie in the works with hbo films so even though he's in real big trouble, he's been booed out of the house, right? He's essentially been stripped of his ability to be a fucking politician. They're working on a fucking movie, a series, a film, whatever, something with fucking HBO. If that's not proof that he is the, he is the American dream, I don't know what is. And it kind of proves that in the States, maybe different to the UK, you can really get away with being a piece of shit it's kind of rewarded I, I don't think you can get away with it a lot in the uk like there, there's really a ceiling with how much a piece of shit can do but i think in america you have an appreciation for a piece of shit and i think maybe there is an ability for you guys to i feel like american people have and they, they have a you have an appreciation for the good parts of a piece of shit like that's why some people some americans are willing to even entertain the idea of donald trump president presidency again right which probably he will end up winning by a landslide i think so most likely if he runs again against joe biden he'll win that presidency easy with his fucking eyes closed but i think the reason why you appreciate that is because i think you all are very aware of how much of a piece of shit you all are individually you know i think um, english people or european people we have this idea that we're better that that we're kind of um that we yeah we're better we feel like we're smarter uh, and we don't really see the piece of shitness that we have in ourselves we don't really see it or well, we can point in other people but we don't really see it in ourselves i think there's a saying in the fucking bible isn't it about like don't point out other people's errors until you get the log out of your own eye type of thing like whatever it may be but i think that ability to kind of see the good in pieces of shit is definitely what allows people like george santos to despite being under criminal investigation having a trial set you know for next year for actual criminal charges for taking public fucking funds and using it to fucking plump up his face and shit he's still gonna have a series or a movie being done for him by fucking hbo it's absolutely really super super impressive so let's read the article courtesy of sky news it says here republican congressman george santos has been expelled from the u.s house representative after a fraud report sorry a fraud report after a report found overwhelming evidence that he misused campaign donations this should be one of the most egregious things any public you know any fucking um politician could do really that should be like a crime that should definitely get you prison time right if you misuse public funds or you misuse sorry campaign funds meant to basically serve the public and you use it for your own gain that should be instant prison time right you shouldn't be able to be celebrated and lauded and made hbo films about but he's fucking winning so let's see what how he's winning here mr santos was ousted 311 to 114 in a bipartisan vote only the six timer member has been kicked out of the house of commons since it was founded he's only the sixth person so all of the pieces of shit in you know all the you know most politicians are fucking pieces of shit anyway for all the pieces of shit that exist there he's only the sixth bloody hell so he must have done a lot of bad shit two thirds of the members must support the move but a damning report by the house commons committee that accused him of breaking federal law appeared to seal his faith he's 35 years old oh my god yo he has lived a life in it he's 35 with all this work done but he still looks like that that's a f i've always wondered people that do like people that have like a lot of work done but then they're also super fat like i've i've, n I've never understood the, the like the logic in it like surely you'd want to give yourself every ability every chance to look as hot and as good looking and as snatched as you could do as much as you can yourself to get rid of some of the baby fat the extra fat whatever it may be you know tone this up get this where, where it needs to be and then you do the extra you know you get underneath the knife to fix up all the things that you can't fix up yourself but why would you be morbidly obese and then get fucking lip fillers and then get fucking botox you know what i mean it doesn't make any sense really it's a bit odd and again he's 35 look what he looks like it's fucking crazy really to be fair that is a really that isn't and again he could be even lying 
you could he there's there's a possibility that he's lying about his age like he could definitely be way older than 35 so speaking of the recent um speaking the evening before the vote he said the people of the third district of new york sent me here if they want me out you're going to have to go and silence those people and go take the hard vote mr santo argued that he set a precedent that would make the expulsion more common Three previous cases involved disloyalty for the union, including the American Civil War, and the remaining two were politicians were convicted of federal crimes. A congressional investigation found that he charged his campaign account nearly 4,000 for spa treatments, including Botox. <laughs> this guy is too much, bro. He charged his account, campaign account for spa treatments. He also spent more than 4000 at designer stores in Hermes, um, Hermes and made smaller purchases from an OnlyFans site best known for sexual content. Oh my God. He purchased OnlyFans stuff using campaign donations. No fucking way. As the outcome of the Friday's vote became clear, Mr. Santos put his coat over his shoulders, shook hands with some of the members who voted against expulsion and exited the chamber. The House Speaker, Mike Joseph, see, he didn't have nothing to say, did he? Mike Joseph solemnly, solemnly instructed a clerk to inform New York's governor his seat was now vacant. Mr. Santos was in the first term and had been provisionally fettered as an exciting prospect after he flipped the district from the Democrats in November 2022. So he started off amazing, right? He flipped a district that was usually democrat into being republican and then he still fucked it up so he actually had some stuff about him that people kind of believed in but he then just started pissing in their mouths literally but the committee launched a probe in march after reports that he lied about a jewish <laughs> he lied about being jewish jewish ancestry and that his grandparents fleeing the nazis working <laughs> into best of <laughs> nah this guy's this guy's brendan schub levels he lied about being jewish he lied about his parents fleeing the Nazis and also he lied about working at Goldman Sachs and his college degree. That sounds like a standard thing though. We all lie about that, don't we? Don't we lie about that during our interviews and stuff? Our job interviews, our first dates. <laughs> don't we all lie about that sort of stuff? Yeah, babe. Yeah, you know, I did this, I did that. <laughs> yeah, I've got this experience here. You know, we all lie about these things. God almighty, bro. How'd you lie about working in Goldman Sachs though? How do you get away with that kind of lie? Do I wonder in America if they don't? Because in the UK, you definitely if you apply for a job and you put some experience down on your fucking list, they're definitely going to call for a reference. I don't know if they do that in all places, but in the UK, they definitely call at least one. They won't call maybe all your references, but they'll definitely call one. So putting Goldman Sachs on there is a really big risk, unless you've got a friend that can, you know, pretend like they're a Goldman Sachs HR person. I don't know. That's a big risk, boy. It lasted eight months and found that overwhelming evidence of the law breaking and Mr. Santos has now admitted to making up much of his biography. Look at him in the fucking house with that. What's that lady? I forgot the lady that does CrossFit, right? The laughing there, like <laughs> living the life, bro. Pissing off people and living the fucking life. I fucking love it. Um, the US Attorney's Office ad indicted him in May, accusing him of cheating donors and laundering campaign funds for his own personal use and lying to Congress. It alleged that, the stole, um, that he stole donors donors oh my god it alleges that he stole donors identities and used their credit cards to make tens of thousands in unauthorized charges so not only is he stealing campaign funds he's also stealing their dls and their card details to fucking purchase like, honestly this guy's too much it's one thing to take to like use your company card right fair enough use your company card to maybe i don't know to get yourself a fucking steak dinner every fucking day it's risky because you can still get sacked for gross misconduct but i kind of get it but then stealing customers details to do that is insane <laughs> he's a real criminal for real mr santos has pleaded not guilty to of course he did to the criminal charges and his trial is set to be scheduled for september 2024 bloody hell long time so in between that he's going to be absolutely killing it right he's going to be doing films podcast appearances mr santos is not a victim he is a perpetrator of a massive fraud um of his constant of his constituents sorry and the american people says suzanne wilde a top democrat the last person to be kicked out of the house of commons um also of the house was democrat james uh trafficant or trafficant over a criminal co corruption conviction in 2022 or 2002 new york state governor kathy hoshell now has 10 days to call a special election for mr santos's seat 
this guy is an absolute wild boy wild fucking boy and then of course let's go to the fucking variety article here about his movie with hbo so all of that stuff is being said right seeing people's details he's still gonna have a movie with hbo so a movie about george santos is in the works with hbo films hbo films has optioned the rights to mark um Truzino's book the fabulist the lying hustling grifting stealing and very american legend of george santos oh, that's a fucking brilliant book title isn't it the fabulous the lying hustling grifting stealing and very american legend of george santos that's a fucking brilliant title i have to definitely pick that up which was published in november 28th the film comes from the frank rick who executive produced the hbo series veep and succession wow um mike Makowski, bad education is set to write, rewrite uh, write the screenplay for the george santos movie which will also executive produce with rich um Trezina will serve as a consultant producer the film is described as a forensic and darkly comic um at the unprecedented congressional race in long island ny and led to santos being elected for congress per the official logline the film tells the story of a seemingly minor local race that wound up in a battle of the soul of long island and unexpected and unexpectedly carved a path of the world's most famous and now disgraced congressman the gatsby x journey they're calling him gatsby he's nothing like fucking gatsby come on fuck off I love that fucking book. Um, the Gatsby S journey of a man who's nowhere, who from nowhere, who exploited the system, waged war on the truth, and swindled one of the wealthiest districts in the country to achieve his American dream. The movie announcement comes on the heels of Santos being expelled from Congress on Friday after FX violations, making him the sixth U.S. House member in history to be expelled. Deadline was first to report this news. Crazy, bro. He's actually going to have a movie based on his life already being put out there. But it makes sense, though, because his story is fucking wild. Some of the lies are absolutely insane. I think there was one story I remember reading about him where he, um, what did he do? I think he stole money from some, like, guy, some dog chariot or something. Like, it was fucking insane. Really corrupt and horrible shit. But again, big up George Santos. He is the living embodiment of the American dream. You know, he got the most out of life with having zero talent and being an absolute grifter and a criminal and now he's having a movie option for him and most likely if he's lucky i could see a reality a scenario where he doesn't end up spending a minute in prison he could actually get away with it he could actually have a plea deal confess to his crime something along those lines work out some sort of option some sort of deal that allows him to not spend a single minute in the prison cell i could see that happening he could actually skate away from it he'll end up doing fucking dancing with the stars and shit he might end up on, I don't know, some reality TV show or some, or maybe have his own reality TV show and go from there. Honestly, he might actually get away with it. Exactly. Chili Bay is a true American dream. But yeah, um, what a fucking, what a hero. What an absolute hero. Big up fucking George Santos. Moving on from George Santos news, I quickly wanted to talk about the Spotify Wrapped and um, how much of a normie thing it is and how I'm so happy that it's not something I've ever flipping entertained. I don't know, maybe because... I just don't care what people listen to or maybe I just don't care to share my highlight reels of the things I'm into but I never understood how hyped people get for shit like Spotify Wrapped but I think maybe Spotify Wrapped is like the equivalent of like being into Taylor Swift music it's just something that normies do and something that the general public just loves to do and they tap into it because clearly I'm one of the only people that doesn't share this sort of stuff but I've never understood like why it's become such a a cultural thing to kind of take part in and share your fucking taste and shit because the funny thing is really when you watch people's fucking um Spotify wrapped usually it does kind of um go against what they preach about online right you'll see somebody say they hate drake a lot and then they'll post their spotify raps and it'll be nothing but drake on there so it kind of proves that people just talk a lot of shit fair enough um it also proves that people don't really have much of a broad music taste it's usually just the same type of artist like five times fair but also i don't care like i really could care less what people are into and what they listen to and what their habits are online and there's a part of me that also is a bit cynical and feels like there's an option for apps like Spotify to finagle the stats behind the scenes and purposely manipulate statistics and numbers how stuff is represented and how it's played. Because if I'm not mistaken, Spotify Wrapped only allows you, if I'm not mistaken, it's not like downloaded content. It's like stuff you have to stream. 
and I download a lot of my content, especially when I'm listening to it on fucking Spotify. So I can have it listen to I listen to it offline. So because my net my fucking mobile network's a bit shit, so I can usually have it just on my phone. So if I'm listening to a lot of stuff offline that isn't exactly like stream, it makes it difficult. And then of course my Spotify Wrapped isn't the best reflection of what I listen to because I listen to Spotify differently than I listen to Apple Music. I'm one of those weirdos that has both services, right? I pay the subscription for Spotify and obviously for Apple Music, but I listen to different stuff on each one. I probably say my Spotify is probably more, you know, indie and electronic music and dance music based, and then my Apple Music is everything else. So it's kind of hard to have it reflect my actual musical taste and what I actually get up to. It's just one of those things in there. So I've never really understood why people actually give a fuck about it, but spare a thought for people that work at spotify because imagine the spotify rap thing happens and i think it's usually i'd imagine if you're working at spotify spotify rap is probably like a celebration time because it's time for them to maybe you know roll out some new features they've been working on product wise it's a time to celebrate people's you know listening and what they've been up to celebrate the music that's been out there the fans blah 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 the customers duh, 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 duh. imagine if you're a spotify employee and then you put out reps and then this was what happens Spotify laid off 1,500 employees just before Christmas. <laughs> Can you imagine how brutal that is? Everyone's celebrating their Spotify, right? everyone's posting their fucking posts online, and here you are just reading over your fucking, you know, redundancy email. Like, Jesus Christ, bro. 1,500 people have been sacked from Spotify, 70% of their company staff, right? The article calls it of engagement. Spotify is cutting jobs for the third time this year. Even though I think, the, didn't they report record profits? So imagine, they're recording rec record revenue profits and all that, whatever else it means, right? But they're still cutting people in the background. That is the quintessential mark marker of capitalism. Because I'm assuming they probably have to, you know, answer to their shareholders and demonstrate that they are growing year on year. And what's the easiest way to kind of cut costs and to show that you're actually growing as a company? You guessed it, you cut fucking staff. That's the easiest way because payroll is, you know, usually exorbitant in most places. It usually accounts for most of your fucking spending. So you cut 1,500 jobs. You then convert that money that you saved <laughs> for 1,500 jobs. You add that to your year end reports. And then suddenly you have year on year growth, which is insane, really. What well, these shareholders and board people want to see growth at all fucking you know at all cost year on year there's no such thing as stagnating if it stagnates or if it's flat or if it's the same they get fucking upset so it's really 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 awful it continues um in a pre-holiday shocker spotify is laying off 1500 workers or 70 percent of his workforce ceo daniel eck announced in the press release on monday the cuts are being made due to what x called the challenges ahead <laughs> i love how the challenges never impact you know um what do you call it? The the C suite, executive suite, the board, right? It always affects the the fucking minions below. That's who it affects. Um, affected employees will be notified later today. The quote. I realize that many, um, for many, a reduction of this size will feel surprisingly large given the recent positive earnings report and our performance. X wrote. We debated making smaller reductions throughout 2024 and 2025, yet considering the gap between our financial goal state and our current operational cost, I decided that substantial action to right-size our cost was the best option to accomplish our objectives. While I'm convinced this is the right action for our company, I also understand it would be incredibly painful. That's just corporate speak for I pick the profits and I pick the bottom line over my staff or over my employees over my team members whatever that's just a straight up like i'll pick the profits all day long i pick my life i pick my safety i pick my kids private schools i pick my house on the fucking uh, you know i pick my lakeside house i pick my apartment my fucking penthouse suite in miami over you guys that is fucking crazy isn't it like that 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 line there is definitely the brutal one yet considering the gap between our financial goal state and our current operational cost <laughs> i picked that one <laughs> it continues x went on to note that the company expanded considerably in 2020 and 2021 due to the lower cost of capital these investments generally worked contributing to spotify's increased output and the platform's robust growth this past year and despite reductions made last year the company laid off six percent of its workers early in 2023 and two percent in may our cost structure for where we need to be is still too big so they hired massively 
because they wanted growth. They wanted to show, because that's the thing with companies is really annoying. I especially I've working, you know, I've worked in a few startups myself and shit and just corporate, in, you know, most people have worked in corporate industries like that. But the issue is this. Most likely, it's about in startups, to get more funding, you have to demonstrate you're growing. And one way to demonstrate you're growing is to just hire loads of staff because the thinking is that the, you're hiring staff because you need them right you need them because of how you're growing and then when you grow and you hire these stuff they might then you know help you to achieve certain things to roll out certain products certain services whatever reach more customers and then that'll add to your bottom line but also rapidly growing that way and hiring more people could also be a a bit of a poison chalice because it ends up kind of you know putting more light and more focus into what you're actually doing and what you're actually achieving or the lack thereof and then if it doesn't match up sometimes the person to get the fucking call or to get the fucking the neck cut off is definitely a head cut off sorry is definitely the fucking lowly staff it's really unfortunate following uh follow these rounds of layoffs spotify had around nine thousand employees so the latest cuts will be will see around 1500 employees lose their jobs 4300 of those jobs were in the u.s as of 2022 to soften the blow <laughs> to soften the blow they go uh, are they going to give him free spotify for the, for the rest of their lives to soften the blow spotify will pay an average of five month severance that's pretty decent isn't it what do you usually get i think in the uk severance is calculated is every year you work is a month i think usually i forgot what term it is but in the uk your severance is like once you pass your probation and you pass a certain um you know time at the company every year you work adds a month to your overall severance or your i guess whatever the pay is not severance whatever it is i think that's how it works in the uk um x said that the company's next phase um being lean is not just an option but a necessary last month spotify announced a revamped royalty model which is supposed to give the working artists a bigger cut while reducing free uh, fraudulent streams spotify has seen consistent growth since last launch and now counts 574 million active users up to 26 percent over the past same year the company has also struggled to make profit though with its latest um with its last quarter being a rare exception it promised more information about the changes will mean in the days and weeks ahead it's interesting how they're not able to make a lot of money in it maybe they again yeah, maybe it is a bloated company maybe they are they've got too many people working there that does make a lot of sense but Spotify year app is like a holiday my year exactly yeah. I don't I don't really understand I don't really get it um I really okay really Cal K20 in the chat is saying in the states you're lucky to get any severance it really is job dependent fucking you know that's brutal um I'm surprised by all of this because I, but my my thinking again this is maybe a bit of a stretch but I'm wondering if all of these cuts in startups and stuff in companies is a direct consequence of Elon because I feel like ever since Elon took over Twitter and turned it into X and decided to get rid of, I think like, was it like 90% of the staff or something? 80% of the staff? Like he, he went in with a fucking axe. He went crazy. And again, maybe he had a lot more of a reason to because it did seem like Twitter did, you know, they were basically overstaffed. They didn't need to have that many staff to run that kind of company or that kind of service or product or whatever. And they cut loads of people. And the fact that now all these companies are seeing how well, how well Twitter's doing you know relatively in terms of it's still alive maybe that's the reason why all these companies are deciding to fucking you know to cut all their staff maybe they're deciding you know what if he's able to run this company with a very lean um you know staff base maybe we can do the same thing too we don't need to be hiring just for the sake of hiring it doesn't make any sense so maybe that can maybe there's a main reason why everyone's doing it now um which is really unfortunate to be fair but hey what can you do um big up everybody that got let go again you know i can't you know i've been there before when you get let go before christmas it's absolutely brutal there's no good time to ever let get let go but if there's one worse time to get let go it's definitely somewhere around your birthday <laughs> before a holiday like an actual vacation you booked or before christmas i think those are brutal right your birthday a vacation you've booked or christmas that's gonna fucking sting it really is gonna sting so you know hold your head up you know five months severance definitely make sure you can stretch that as long as you can maybe try and stretch that for a year and see where you go from there but yeah i guess the only comfort you can take from this is that it's happening to a lot of people it's not just you know spotify employees i think people in all different sectors are getting their jobs cut and stuff so it definitely isn't personal um but it definitely does feel like it you know there's no way you can't not feel like it's personal so what can you do what 
can you do? Um, yeah, big up Wolfgang Rittner. Thank you for joining, my friend. What's up? What's up? What's up? So, moving on from that one, let's go on to some other news I want to talk about here quickly. This is regarding the Joe Fresh Goods and New Balance collaboration, due to be dropping very, very, very soon. I'm a big fan of these, obviously, because they're inspired by the fucking iconic movie Belly from back in the day. If you kind of know anything about it, it's a free pack at the moment. Um, I think these are the NB. I think they're the 2002, right? Yeah, no, it's not. It's, it's a 990 version 4. It's my bad. I thought it was a 2002 R's. So it's a 990 version 2's. Is it 990 version 2's? So it says there, right? 990 version 4, sorry, um, by Joe Fresh Goods. You've got three different colorways. You've got the intro, you've got the Keisha Blue, and the outro. Um, and they're going to be coming out very, very soon. I love the storytelling that he does with these fucking sneaker collaborations, Joe Fresh Goods. Um, again, they're very maybe... um american in their look especially the white and black ones or just the colorways in general especially being inspired by movies you think of all of the guys from the states that would be posting their nike ids and the references they'd be making from back to the future to like i don't know whatever spider-man and shit americans do love their thematic based you know their theme based colorways and shit they love to do the whole storytelling through shoes but i actually love these i love the execution of these um the material choices is really cool as well on these white and black ones you've got this lovely 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 brushed almost suede effect here on the top new buck almost you've got this nice addition of the plain leather you've also got the black mesh on there as well they look absolutely sublime and i'd also love the fact that it just went for a pure white outsole as well so no breaking up of it and making it black on the out no no breaking no making it black on the midsole on the outsole is completely white and i'm guessing once you wear that in as well you get some really nice wears on the bottom of that and it kind of is going to look really nice once it gets distressed and stuff i love the fact that he relaced the shoes by the way um, you can tell definitely Joe Fresh Goods is a sneaker head. The shoes have been relaced correctly. If you know about correctly lacing shoes, you know what I'll go on. And again, white lining on the inside for me is always a bit of a no-no because I guess I just have really dirty feet. Right? I'm a fucking dirty feet. I'm a gutter baby. So whenever I'm wearing socks, my socks get absolutely destroyed very quickly. So I can imagine the fucking sock lining or the inner lining of the shoe is going to get really done up very quickly with that white on the inside. But I love them. Also, I love the little addition there of the belly logo font with a nice 1998 the release date of the movie down the back of the hill tab um the other colorway in blue is really beautiful too these will go actually really well if i remember correctly what was that um was it supreme belly jacket do you guys remember this that came out a while ago i think those shoes would actually go really well with this jacket that came out from supreme a while back that would go really well if you if you're one again i'm not really for matchy matchy everything but I think if you wanted to do a bit of matchy matchy, that Supreme jacket that came out maybe a couple of seasons ago that features the iconic image of Nas walking through the club with the fucking contacts in and shit and whatnot, that would look really cool with those fucking Joe Fresh Good shoes. I'm not going to lie. That would look really, really flippant cool. So if you want to do that, whatever, make sure you do. And then we've got another colorway here. Um, which is the last one. I think this is the outro. You've got this reverse of the white and black. So you've got the reverse white and black. These look really cool too. Um, so same basically model, um, same outlay. Instead of as well, I love this in addition on the inside. So you've got the white mesh. You've got here black patent. That's really good mix. I love that patent. The black patent mixed with the suede looks really cool as well. And again, relays and look incredible. So these are going to do numbers when they come out. You've also got the little Joe Freshgood insignia little stamp there on the side as well. They look really, really fucking good. So I can't really wait for these to come out when they do eventually drop. We've got no idea on release date at the moment so far. Um, but hopefully we get a date soon regarding these. But they look absolutely tough. Love everything about them. Um ready so i think full winter 2023 so they're going to come out sometime soon before the end of the year i'm assuming um but yeah they look really really cool i love the look of them joe fresh good so far hasn't really missed when it comes to his new balance collabs so can't wait to see them drop when they do eventually drop but these are absolutely incredible so big up joe fresh goods big up joe fresh goods and then of course we have to talk about a little bit about these they have not come out just yet to be fair um i'm still waiting for them to drop these are the reimagined jordan fours um you know 
most of you would know that Jordan 4 is definitely are in my top five sneakers of all time. I think my sneakers of all time have to be the Air Max 90 Infrared, the Air Force One Low, and then of course Jordan 4s definitely are in my top four, um, top five, sorry, sneakers of all time. But for, for whatever reason over the years, the shapes have been super shit. And the reimagined shape, essentially what they've done is that they've tried to make the shape um, to spec of when they originally came out in the, what, 80s, 90s and shit, right? So they've got the original specs, original shape of how they come out. They've got, the obviously, the original Nike Air tab on the back of the Jumpman. And they're meant to be using very, very high-quality materials on them too. As you can see, the leather here is really, you know, it's got this real tumbled, lovely leather that will really kind of um, break in really well once you wear it. And will probably take up a lot of damage and can take up a lot of fucking wears and shit and just in general they just look of a higher quality than the standard jordans that you usually get when they have usually drop and of course that colorway the bread colorway is absolutely iconic there's nothing else you can say about that Tika Hatford absolutely snapped on these i've loved them from day dot and i can't wait for them to drop like i'm actually considering when they do actually come out i'm considering doing two pairs or maybe even three pairs one to rock two to fucking have on ice because i'm gonna be beating these into the ground because the last time i had a pair of bread jordan fours i absolutely wore them into the ground like like literally to the point where the back was like slanted because of how much I was wearing them in like holes in the bottom of the shoes like I would absolutely wear them every single flipping day because they go with so many fucking outfits as well so I'm all over these can't wait for them to drop again um, I think the pricing is going to be fairly expensive too from what I've seen I've seen prices up upwards of 200 so which I'm fairly okay with I've always said if you're a Jordan brand and you want to have because Jordan brand are pretty repetitive you know for lack of a better term especially you know they try to service their american customers so they just put out retro after retro after retros they don't really make any interesting new shoes so if you're going to put out retros every single year and you're going to flood the market with jordan ones with jordan threes with jordan fours with sixes with sevens at least give sneakerheads like good quality materials give them the best shapes possible so that when they're spending 250 dollars plus on these shoes they, they they know they're getting something special it's not just the same jordan and other colorway so it's good to see them doing this kind of reimagined thing because at least that gives sneakers like myself who don't mind spending the money on actual good quality stuff or don't mind buying the same shoe again every fucking year at least we're going to be okay buying it when it's actually a good quality or very very high quality so i'm eager to see these drop i'm eager to get them in the hand but so far just looking at the shoe there with no socks you know with no someone's you know with no foot inside no form thing to kind of make it look a certain way the shape already looks absolutely phenomenal like you have this really nice um you know flat sole flat out so which again it's hard to describe really if you're not really into shoes but usually nike retros have a have tendency to kind of have this weird banana bend at the top so this whole flat thing here going on the shape of it is just absolutely chef's kiss so i can't wait for them to drop and i'm gonna be buying maybe three pairs minimum I swear to God, I'm not even fucking joking. I'm going to be buying three pairs minimum. Um, moving on from that one. Moving on from that one. What else do we have here? We have this post courtesy of staying grounded regarding Kerwin Frost's collaboration with McDonald's. Um, I think it's absolutely true to dash, to be fair. Um, I think Kerwin Frost is a psyop. <laughs> <laughs> he's definitely a psyop in some regard i've never really got his appeal in the slightest um i think the interview show that he does is you know it's a bit mediocre i think it's good because he's friends with those people and they're comfortable around him and shit but i don't think he's even a good interviewer um i don't like the shit that he wears his face kind of annoys me and this collaboration could just get thrown in the bin I think so. You could just throw this in a volcano and you could burn it all and I don't think anyone would care. I really don't. This is absolutely diabolically horrendous. So it says here, courtesy of Stay Grounded, Kevin Frost is back with his own McDonald's collab in a meal um, dropping on Monday 11th of December, I guess in the States probably, along with his McNuggets buddies. He's got these McNuggets buddies, t-shirts and hoodies. This collab includes a new footwear silhouette called the Fry Guy Shoes that are going to be worn in Cohen Frost's character. The portion of the proceeds of the sales are going to be contributed to the Harlem Arts Alliance, an organization that helps the, um, young adults with the community to spark a creativity. His quote, I've loved McDonald's since I was a kid. 
Oh, really? We could never tell. Um, I've even made had my own McDonald's doll I brought to picture day at school. And it was my dream to collect... <laughs> It was my dream. Imagine having a dream to collect McDonald's toys, um, to collect all the McNugget buddies. Now coming, now coming up with my own special set of buddies, each one representing different aspects of my self-expression. It's unreal, a dream come true. McDonald's has been a great partner from day one. This is some psyop shit. I swear to God. I hope the Coming Frost Box will serve as a reminder to people to hone their creativity. He wants people to, while people are fucking shoving. Ch mcdonald's chicken nuggets into their faces while they're dipping those mcdonald's chicken nuggets into sweet and sour sauce cause that's the only way to eat them and they're guzzling them and they're fuck you know while they're fucking still drunk still high right with their ass hanging out they should remember how to be creative right creativity is gonna rule the world is gonna heal the world like come on brother anyway let, here's some of the mcnuggets buddies that are gonna be part of the fucking collab okay i guess there's almost something quite gollywogish about these isn't it like there's something quite like i don't know quite racist about these mcnugget buddies i don't know what it is but there's something quite racist about them i don't know why <laughs> but if you went into your friend's house and he had these on his fucking you know on his shelf somewhere you might give him a little bit of a look like what the fuck's what, what are those about eh? either he's into some weird corporate juju or he's you know I don't know. And there's different types of McBuddies buddies, right? There's one called a Kerwin, of course. There's an Uptown Mo. There's one called Brick. Brick. Um, there's one called Dala. There's one called Don Bernice. And there's one called Wafuto. I don't know. Even the names sound very racist. Like, why are all these... <laughs> like, what's going on here? Like, what is this? It continues. There's also the box for the Happy Meal, which is quite cool. The design of the Happy Meal box is quite cool. I love all the illustrations around it um all right that's all right um and then of course his meal uh Cohen frost's meal with mcdonald's is a big mac or chicken nuggets you didn't pick a drink or anything else you just picked a big mac and chicken nuggets that's what so he's trying to he's trying to act like he does he just he eats one thing from mcdonald's and that's it okay fair play then i guess but i couldn't imagine anything worse and also he's also he's also got a pair of shoes that he's dropping too so those are the shoes oh my god oh my fucking god they're these blue sandals with blue eyes on them i don't know why you wear i guess they're meant to be crocs or something i don't know what they are but they look horrendous and there's also a wristband there's also a, is that jacket part of the mcdonald's collaboration i'm not really sure there's, there's a purple jacket with styles all over them this whole collection is absolutely dog shit maybe the best thing about it is the hat maybe the hat's all right the top hat there's a black top hat with a tiffany blue band that has a mcdonald's logo on it maybe that's something that you could wear unironically i can see wings of redemption wearing it as he's stuffing his face with a burger but overall that is one of the worst things i've ever seen in my entire life let's see the comments on stay grounded what was his come up every time i ask people just to tell me he's some guy interning for adidas for years really i didn't know that um who would have thought a dude who went viral for getting beat up by carty would have his own mcdonald's meal yeah th that's true his come up has been quite cool. So I guess if you're a kid and you're just like a fan of the scene, the fact that he's come up without really, I don't know, doing anything of no and just being like an interesting dude because he wears, you know, he has like interesting outfits and shit. That might be a part of his inspiration. But just looking at it in isolation, this stuff is fucking horrendous. Um, is he being nice to his wife now? Uh, oh yeah, he did that thing with his wife, innit? I'm not too sure what happened there. I could care less about that now. Can y'all collab with a restaurant with food that won't kill us, please? This is awesome, by the way. I just don't like McDonald's. But that's the thing, though. I guess it's I don't really mind that he's collaborating with McDonald's, right? I don't really give a fuck that it's bad for you and shit. Fair enough. I think if you're a fat dude and you like McDonald's, you should collaborate with them. You shouldn't try and collaborate with fucking or I don't know what's the fucking salad company, whatever, right? It doesn't make any sense if you eat that shit collab with it put it out there you know what i mean you, you're not you're not putting back you're not putting back out more toxic shit than already exist it kind of is what it is don't touch them car e we need to come together and make selling out uncool again um i don't think selling out has ever been uncool it's always been uncool but i just don't think Cohen is that cool that it would matter do you know what i mean 
no one's thinking that he's at the forefront of being cool or avant-garde in any way shape or form he just does his own thing um so but i think selling out has always been uncool it's never not gonna be uncool especially if you sell out in this way but again he's doing his own thing i don't really have a problem with him doing what he's doing i just have an issue with the stuff being so shit you know and i also have the, an issue with this stuff being you know just gaudy and terrible looking and the meal is even that interesting either what's the meal the meal is just what a a burg big mac and nuggets is that it where's the upside down christmas tree saw the pic first and thought it was a cam cam newton <laughs> that's hilarious free palestine and this is cool as fuck remember when he left his wife and kid to bang some girl for a few weeks and then came back and all of a sudden he was see <laughs> yeah big up cohen Everyone, I guess deep down, all, all men would love to leave their wives, just bang a random and then come back home and like, you know what? I made a mistake. <laughs> and because your wife is desperate or your baby mom is desperate for help, she'll just take you back anyway. I think deep down, all men would love to do that. All men would have the ability to just leave their house, leave their kids, leave their dogs and just go and bang somebody else for like a week and then come back later when they're fucking done. I'm sorry, babe. I didn't mean it. <laughs> And then get a McDonald's collaboration and act like nothing happened. That's pretty, pretty cool. That's a pretty cool life to live. It's very risky. I don't think you could do it if you don't have money or clout and stuff. I think regular people like you and I couldn't do that. But I think if you have money and clout and fame, I think you could get away with a lot, to be fair. You really could get away with a lot. It's fucking bad and sad to say that, but it kind of is what it is. But yeah, that collaboration is terrible. I will not be eating it. I will not be buying it. And it kind of is what it is. But big up Kerwin for getting to the bag. And hopefully he cashed that check ASAP. Next, we have a look here, courtesy of Stay Grounded, regarding Bape's collaboration with Canada Goose. Yes, you heard it right. Bape collaborated with Canada Goose. And I think this Canada Goose collaboration is the perfect example as to why Bape is dead. Because Canada Goose is pretty sick as a company, right? In terms of the jackets and coats that they make. It's quite hard to fuck up a Canada Goose jacket. To take a Canada Goose, to, you know, silhouette i think many people i've seen really fuck up a silhouette of canada goose again i love drake but october's very own drake's label drake's fashion brand ovo they did a collaboration with canada goose a few years ago and it was fucking horrendous it looked like some r&b shit it was horrendous i didn't like it at all but i think in general it's kind of hard to fuck up a canada goose jacket i remember having one canada goose type jacket from Vetamon that I used to wear that was fucking amazing and there's been collaborations prior to that and there's been a car hot one that the kind of good jackets are just a great template a great base to kind of work from but obviously ever since Nigo left Bape you know 10 plus years ago kind of goose is Bape has gone down the shit it's been fucking terrible and a lot of it has to do with the holding company that now owns Bape I think it's called it IT or something company in China and for some reason these guys haven't got an ability to find decent designers and it's really odd because if you go and look at i've got old bape magazines they've got a, a really deep archive of things that you could easily just bring back again and just change the colorways you could bring back different type of plaid jackets different type of leather jackets bomber jackets jeans trainers and just tweak some things here and there it's easy done they've got like you know nigo designed a lot of things over his tenure at bape that you could easily pull from but these guys are incapable of doing that even. They're capable of just taking a Bape snowball jacket and then remaking it new nowadays. Just don't, can't do it. So these new designers are fucking terrible. And I think a good example of how terrible they are is how dog shit this Bape Canada Goose collaboration is. It's so shit. Like, look at it. Like, what the fuck is that? Official first look at the Canada Goose Bape collaboration dropping on December 10th, uh, 2nd, sorry. And... I don't even know what model of Canada Goose jacket that is, but this all over camo print on this type of jacket is horrendous. You've got the double badges on either side. Terrible. If it was me, I would put both badges on one side. Canada Goose may be on top and that may be below or something. But putting them on either side is just unnecessary. Just over branding for the sake of branding for the sake of it. It's just whatever it is. The camo print, the down print, the down jacket of it is fucking gash. The shape of the jacket is horrible. And then the model pictures, the lookbook pictures are just ghastly really make it look ghastly there's also a vest that includes in it with the camo design as well i think the vest looks like a different material from the down jacket maybe i'm not really too sure but yeah the logo looks better when it's done side by side like this as you can see here on the vest it's got the one cat but the way it's been done on the shoulders of the jacket on either end is just naff like why would you do that but again they want to get the branding out there they want people to know what you're wearing so it kind of is what it is but the vest is just horrendous like absolutely terrible like even the models can't make it look good 
even the fucking models can't make this shit look good. Like, that just looks so shit. And they could look, they, they've got the Bape logo, they've got the Kind of Goose logo there, a Bape logo there, and then they've still got another logo here. They just couldn't help it. Even though you know what you're wearing, you see the fucking Bape head camo, you see the fucking badges, they had to add another badge on the fucking pocket. They can't even, you know, like the overbranding is just unnecessary. And it's just, it's sad to see because Bape was one of my favorite brands growing up. Um, it was kind of my introduction to streetwear, that and Supreme and the hundreds and, you know, um, Mighty Healthy and what else to kind of think of that I used to wear back in the day, like Diamond and Supply and shit. So it's crazy to see these brands I used to kind of grow up on or I grew up with that introduced me to a lot of this stuff have gone to complete shit and Bape is a good example of it like buying stuff that's made nowadays from Bape is a waste of time it absolutely is terrible you're better off just going to fucking boohoo men or something and buying clothes from there you're better off buying stuff from fucking Timu I swear to god you're better off spending 100 quid on Timu shit than buying anything Bape does because it's absolutely ghastly like this stuff is so shit everything about it's terrible and yeah it's sad to see really so yeah fuck that kind of the goose collaboration i fucking hate it i absolutely hate everything about it moving on we've got this courtesy of stay grounded regarding travis scott's latest collaboration with yes you guessed it audemar pigo also known as ap they've got a chocolate ap here about to drop which i guess is cool because i'm assuming ap have never made a watch in a chocolate brown colorway but that's obviously travis scott's kind of signature color but i'm just curious to know like who is this for like who do you make this for because it's not as if like trav is like trying to it's different when you're a brand right when you're a brand and you're, you're bit, like imagine if i if you start a brand when you're 16 you've probably got 16 tastes and sensibilities but as you grow up your taste levels change and you're hoping that as you grow up your fans grow up with you so that if you're 16 making hoodies when you turn 35 and you want to make a suit your fans might want to have the suit that you make because they liked your hoodies when they were younger and they're growing up with you but Travis Scott's fans are all kids like it's evident from the fucking you know the tragedy that happened in Astro World, right a lot of the people that died were like under the age of 21 if I'm not mistaken I think 10 people that died, a lot of them were under 21. And if you look at, you know, his shows, you go to his comments and stuff, you just go to the live streams, like, they're all kids in the audience, like, absolute kids that go crazy for Travis, they love him. Cool. What kid that's between the ages of, like, 13 to 21 has the funds to buy an AP? <laughs> right? Even, even if they bug their parents for an AP, like, how, how many kids out there are really going to be like, you know what? I need that fucking new Travis AP. I need it. I need it ASAP. Like, how, like what? And if I'm not mistaken, these watches are like, like how much is an AP? How much is an AP? I'm assuming they're like a hundred grand, right? How much is it? Uh, oh no, not that, not Apple Watch. I want, I want an AP. I'm assuming they're like a hundred grand. That's what I'm assuming. 100,000. Let's see. Let's see how much they actually go for. Oof, 15 grand. So let's say for 15,000, right? Let, we see here, 15,000 pounds. Jesus Christ. Like, who's going to, what What parent is going to buy their what, their, their child a chocolate brown watch for 15,000? <laughs> Could you imagine? Could you imagine asking your mum and dad when you're 17 living at home? You don't wash, you don't wash dishes. You don't wash your own clothes. You don't contribute to the rent you eat all your mum's food and your dad's stuff, right? Do you know what I mean? You leave your dirty boxes all over the place, shit stains everywhere, right? You come back at all hours of the night, you piss them off and then you ask them for Christmas, can I get a £15,000 watch, please? <laughs> like, excuse me? In chocolate brown also, most likely you're gonna, you're gonna get over this very quickly. You're not gonna be into these watches, right? I'm assuming, like, you buy a, you know, maybe if you get like a silver version of these watches, right? I'm not really into APs anyway, but if you got one of these nice, maybe not that one. What's wh why is that three hundred? There's a watch here on on Depop. There's a deep. There's a there's a there's an AP on Depop that's selling for three hundred eighty eight pounds. I've got a feeling that isn't real, <laughs> considering the prices. There's one here for sixty pounds on on Depop. People are selling APs on Depop. That's a hilarious. But I would assume you could probably wear the 53,000 one, right? 53,000 one, silver, maybe a lot. It's like a Rolex. You could probably wear it often. 
But how often are you really going to be wearing a chocolate brown watch? Like, really? It's honestly interesting. Again, it's odd because I think I really like Travis Scott's collaborations. I love the ability. I love that he's one of the only hip hop artists, maybe one of the only black artists out there who's, with the exception of the Astro World tra tragedy, he's very brand friendly. Like, he can. He, you can copy and paste him on any brand and he's going to do well. He's going to sell units. His merch does crazy numbers. The merch designs are amazing, right? Even the design of the watch, looking at the watch face and stuff, right? The little dials, it's pretty cool, right? The details in some of these little numbers and stuff has all been hand-drawn and I guess stamped on there. That looks really cool, right? The little logos, the straight, like it, it's fucking beautifully, cr you know, crafted and constructed and shit. It definitely is a, a marvel of fucking engineering in some ways, right? But honestly like the kids that he's that that support him and shit like i don't know maybe there is a contingence maybe there is a maybe there is a section of his fan base that has the money to splay on this sort of stuff maybe kids in the middle east or something maybe he has those type of fans or maybe there's kids in america even um private school kids who just you know love everything about travis and go and see all his performances and shit and buy everything that he does um copy you know his taste in cars and shoes and shit maybe those people exist but i don't know man i'm looking at this stuff and it's just like 15 grand watch that's a wild collab like and again like his fans aren't getting any older if anything his fans are incredibly young still to this day that's the funny thing about it like they're not super old they're just young so i'm mean, interested to see what happens here um reading the comments remember all those people that died at his show and he gave that half hour false apology lols um why does anything travis touch turn to gold 52 second minute watch gonna lose track of time this is so ugly the worst crossover i've ever seen um awful font fire as fuck Another person said here, this collab makes zero sense. I ain't gonna lie, Travis did that. Um, pretty cool. The brand is a big L. Followed through on that line from Meltdown. It's a Timmy this. Um, whoa, was collaboration. So I, I understand for AP, they clearly want to, you know, get into the youth market. I get it. They also want to maybe make their brand to be a little bit synonymous with like quality watches. Maybe they want to take over from Rolex, right? Because at the moment, in America especially, if you get money, the first watch people always get is a Rolex. So maybe they want to take over from there, right? Richard Milley is also doing a good job of doing it now. And I think um, AP are obviously trying to break into that market. They want to get a bit of that market share. But I just don't know if this is the right way to go about doing it. Maybe doing it with leaks of Matthew Williams makes a good sense. But a uh, collaboration with Travis Scott when he's got mostly teenage fans is a bit interesting, a bit odd. But hey, chocolate brand AP, purchase it if you want. It's available where you buy watches, I guess. It's available where you buy fucking watches. Moving on from that one, we've got this collaboration, Curtis, you'll stay grounded again, regarding antisocial club and true religion. I know I shouldn't like this. I know I shouldn't like this sort of shit. And it probably goes against everything I've been saying about other stuff, like the Babe and Canada Goose stuff, but I'm a sucker for antisocial club anti-social social club so I, I, there's something about the brand that i still love even this i know the logo is played out and there was a period in time i think maybe pandemic or something where everyone was wearing this fucking hoodie kanye obviously made it really popular too the hat that they put out but there's something about this term there's something about the logo at the back that just does it for me and i just can't seem to kind of let go of this brand even though they have a real tendency of not shipping their products um the clothes are a bit samey there's not much creativity behind what they do, blah, 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 blah. But the whole story around it, especially when you think of um the guy, Neek, that started the fucking brand. He's a fucking Nike Talk legend. If you know anything about Neek, then you know that story is fucking cool. Um, the fact that they do millions, right, in sales, but it's relatively kind of hush-hush and kind of close to themselves and whatnot. It doesn't really go and do much media, much press and everything. I don't think they have a standalone store, like a physical store. Everything's done online. I quite like everything about the brand, but... Um, this collaboration with True Religion is definitely up my alley, especially this contrast stitching black jacket. Like, I really love this shit. I don't know why. Again, I shouldn't like this. It's very formulaic. It's very fucking ordinary. But there's something about Antisocial Social Club and this True Religion collaboration that I fucking rock. Like, this black contrast stitching jean jacket and obviously the matching jeans are definitely up my fucking alley. It's very black. It's very hood. It's very urban style. But it's definitely something that I would wear. Like, I'd wear the fuck out of this jean jacket. Like, really, really would. 
um, as you can see the Antistral Club um, jacket there with the contrast stitching, True Religion, you got the Antistral Club True Religion hoodie as well, um, you've also got the logo, I, I, like that's that, that's a cool good graphic isn't it, with the contrast stitching figure at the back and then this logo here with the sort of like Buddha type figure there, that looks really cool. Moving on, you got the next logo again. I love this double logo on the front pocket with the true religion horseshoe thing or the back pocket thing with also the logo on top of it. I'm not really too bad about that. Um, and then you've also got this work jacket. Oh, this work jacket is really nice, isn't it? In the cream. That's a really nice colorway. I'm not going to lie. That is really cool. I would wear the fuck out of that as well. And then you've got the matching jeans as well or the bottoms. The only thing I don't like is, a, is the fucking model dress. Having Rich the Kid be the fucking model guy and it's a bit dead. Do you know what I mean? Because he's a bit dead himself. So it's a really strange choice, but it makes sense. So, you know, they're kind of a bit all over the place, but you know, Rich the Kid as a model choice is a bit odd. So I'm not really for that to be fair. But overall, um not too bad at it at all. I'd wear the fuck out of this fucking outfit as he's wearing there. I think it looks absolutely phenomenal. I definitely had wear it. So big out and social club is out now at the moment, I guess, if you want to purchase it. But it looks fucking sick. I'm not really mad at it. I'm not gonna lie. I'm not mad at it in the slightest. I'm not mad at it in the slightest. Um moving on from that one we need to talk a little bit about denim tears and twofold right number one denim tears i want to talk about is these hats these cotton reef hats i feel like might be some of the worst shit i've seen in my life and it's odd because this cotton reef stuff works really well on like clothing i think you know like the hoodies um the jean jackets the jeans the sweat shorts the sweatpants whatever they work really well but there's something about that same design on a new era that just doesn't look good. I don't know what it is about it. It looks very naff. It looks, like, if anything, they kind of look fake. <laughs> That's the weird thing about it. They look like somebody just made it themselves and is selling them, like a bootleg. That's what they kind of look like. You got them in the black, you got it in a green, an orange, a brown, a red, and this blue colorway. Um, maybe it's because I don't really wear new era hats too often. I'm usually a fan of more snapbacks, but there's something about it that uh, I don't know. There's something about it that I just don't like. And I'm not too sure if it's the if it's just the the design I guess I like because I'm I've got the sweatshirt. You know, I'm gonna get actually sorry, the sweatsuit. Um, I'm, I'm a big fan of that and obviously the jeans have done incredibly well but there's something about the actual hats that for me just look a bit crappy and if anything they're kind of a little bit of a I feel like a signifier of the brand selling out in all you know in all terms like they've definitely kind of gone down the river they're definitely not an underground undercover brand anymore they definitely decided to go kind of mainstream and i think this is a great example of it these hats because for sure they're going to be making so much money off these hats because the cost price to make them and shit um is going to be fairly low and they're going to be selling a lot of these because you know you could probably get away with wearing you're probably more comfortable to wear the hat as opposed to wear the fucking sweatsuit or the weather you know the top and bottom so they're probably gonna have a lot more people wear the brand out there but there's something about the hat itself as an item standalone that's just horrendous and i think the interesting part about it is that now that the cotton reef design has become incredibly popular and very mainstream you're now seeing these interesting comments on the fucking instagram so if you go on dead tears instagram you see recently they posted a picture of recent what i would call ready to wear stuff that they're about to drop right stuff that you would describe as their main collection stuff that has been designed it's been fabricated it's been produced it's been styled, whatever the like actual design pieces not just stuff that's been like you know whatever you know not just basic hoodies and hats and shit so this is their actual ready to wear and it looks pretty cool right they've got a beanie here they've got great sweats i'm sure the jeans or the denims are part of the collection too there's a cool little overcoat here um there's also this great little um, rugby top as well with the stripes on it there's some cool sweatpants like you can see there's a lot of design that's gone into constructing these pieces right so cool they all look really good but if you look at the comments look at the comments all the comments people are asking for the cotton reef hoodies so they've put themselves in a weird position where they make all this stuff which i think is actually the best stuff that they make right this these actual cut and sew ready to wear pieces are actually the the best things that they do but the only thing people want 
are the fucking Cotton Reefs. Look at that. Restock the Cotton Reef hoodies, please. Bro, re-up on the drops. We don't care about this mid shit. We want sweatsuits and jeans. <laughs> I don't understand why I have an email for all this shit, but no response. Bro, some fucking hoodies back in stock. When are you guys sending me the fitteds? Ship out the fitteds. <laughs> so, they don't want it. Like, they make all this design shit, right? All this amazing stuff. Like, the, the amount of work that's gone into make this bomber jacket. It's basically, from what I can understand, this is a bomber jacket based on an old flight, like an old pilot's jacket, right? It's like an old vintage piece. They're basically taking it apart, deconstructed it, put it together again, and added their own little bits, right? Custom fucking ribbing here at the bottom, custom patches, like, you know, different colors, nice construction, good quality zips. But the only thing people want, hurry up and restock Christmas coming up. Christmas. <laughs> the two pack jeans, um, heated blanket, like, they only want, all they want is the fucking cotton reefs give me cotton reefs we don't want this mid shit give me more cotton reefs let's see the other comments here let's press the fucking plus sign let's see what the other comments are saying because they're putting something in a weird position so ig they don't get a problem the, the, the bubble jacket is whatever why are you restocking it's christmas restock kind of expected more when are y'all restocking ralph Lauren type shit mids eight put me on like they just want the fucking cotton reefs so i wonder how it must feel for them as a company because now you put yourself in a position where people just expect that cotton reef design on everything a t-shirt a hoodie a blanket whatever they just want more cotton reef they want one hoodies want that they don't actually want the the cut and sew stuff that you actually designed that's actually fun to do right the custom hats the custom sweats like the knitwear the sweatshirts like all this stuff looks fairly cool but they don't really care all they want is the cotton reef shit all they want is a cotton reef shit. So must be just a place to be in as a designer, to be fair. Um, I wonder where, you know, again, money coming in the bank because of the fucking cotton reefs. Because I guess the cotton reefs, in one way, allowed them to do this. You could take more chances in design and make cool beanies and knitwear and jeans when you're selling these hats by the bucket load. But these hats are now, you know, you'd now become typecast because nobody cares about the shit that you make ready to wear shit. They just want the fucking hats. Or they want the cotton reefs off. So it is what it is. Interesting, you know, problem to have. I guess in a way they're suffering from success, right? Maybe they're suffering from success. So I guess it's what whatever it may be. What can you do? Um, next, let's talk about United. Let's talk about fucking Manchester United, my fucking horrendous club. We lost one nil away from home against Newcastle the other day, and let's said about the result it kind of is what it is you're not going to win every single game the most frustrating part about the performance about the sorry, about the match was the performance i think you can have an off day newcastle are clearly a you know a club on the ascendancy they've got new owners they've bought very well very well they've got a very good coach a very highly i think a manager that's definitely underrated in eddie howe right and they're playing attractive football the fans are behind them you understand you could lose especially going to you know st james park a very intimidating stadium you know great they play well play amazing you're not going to win those games all the time but the performance the lack of effort from our players the lack of running the lack of tracking back from our wingers in Garnacha and Rashford and shit the horrible defending from our fullbacks the lack of concentration in the middle our shaky goalkeeper and Onana our non-existent captain Fantastico and Bruno Fernandes our striker Martial that's like you know he's not the he's shadow of his former self in terms of the ball sticking to him it was such a horrendous performance from top to bottom there's not really much I can pick apart but look at the stats Look at the fucking stats. The stats really tell you everything you need to know about that performance. Newcastle had 22 shots and we had eight. They had four shots on target. So they had basically 26 shots on goal and we had nine. That is a complete domination. That's, complete get, that's completely getting battered. When they have 26 shots on, on, on fucking goal and we have nine shots. Can you imagine that? Possession stats I'm not really too bothered about because possession can be a bit misleading. But when they have 26 shots on goal and we have nine, that tells you the entire story of the fucking game. 
Possession 59, us 41. Passes even is a good illustration of the control that they had in the game. They had 522 completed passes and we had 366. Absolutely crazy. Pass accuracy, 83%. Ours, 75%. Absolutely horrendous. But again, the lineup was really, 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 really interesting because if anything, it was just the same old names letting us down. The 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 fucking Dallows, the Luke Shaws, Maguire not really to some extent because I think he played pretty well. Um, Kobe Maynard, I felt really bad for him again after that great first performance for United senior team and then playing against you know Newcastle being left stranded and let to do the job of 11 people in the game and then playing too further forward and having to cover so much space. He looked very ordinary. Scott McTominay was hiding the entire time as he always does. Bruno Fernandes hardly did anything in the game. Marcus Rashford was... Maybe one of the worst performances Rashford ever. It's been quite nice to see people online reacting finally to Marcus Rashford because I think most United fans, myself included, have been seeing this performances more often than not. He plays at this all the time. He, just because he maybe scores a goal here and there, people maybe ignore it. But Marcus Rashford's performance levels have been so terrible recently. It's maybe wonder if maybe he's just gone to shit or maybe something else is happening outside of football because there's a rumour flying around on Twitter now at the moment that allegedly he's addicted to Xanax. That's the running rumour now at the moment. Again, I don't believe it personally. I think it's a convenient rumour to kind of come out there. But allegedly there's some sort of Xanax addiction thing going on there. He failed a drug test or something, whatever. Allegedly, who knows? But regardless... He's playing like absolute dog shit. There was instances where he was, you know, attempting to track back and he just gave up and started walking, which is absolutely criminal. So his lack of effort, his lack of fucking, you know, putting his foot forward for the team is just what it is. I guess it's paramount to where we are as a club. And if anything, this loss was weird because it didn't really affect me like other other losses have. I think I've started to reach a point of just not caring anymore when it comes to United. Like when we lose games, I don't really flip my lid too much. I might use some expletives on social, especially when I'm ranting and shit on Twitter, but I'm not really that bothered to be honest because I know fundamentally the only reason why we're, you know, the reason why we're at where we're at the moment is largely down to our owners and we're quite powerless to kind of get our owners out of the club our owners don't want to leave our owners want to bleed our club dry so without new owners we are basically fucked for a long long fucking time so it's not really much i can do not much my shouting or screaming can really affect or change things so it kind of is what it is but it is frustrating to see us play so horribly so consistently for so long it just doesn't make any fucking sense the substitutions from eric ten Hag also need to be spoken about because he's really starting to show that he might not be the manager that we hope to be he might be the greatest catfish of a manager ever seen eric ten Hag may be the greatest managerial catfish we've seen and i think my real antennas were up when i heard that story that allegedly eric ten Hag said something like oh he wasn't brought to united to play the ajax way he was brought there to win so he essentially changed his philosophy of how he was likes his teams to play football and kind of basically mold them to the players that he had which i think is a wrong way to go about things i think if you're a top manager you have your way of playing and the players have to acquiesce to how you play or they get booted out but obviously with the owners that we have at the club they don't really care about our long-term future sporting wise so players get contracts that don't deserve them and we don't sell well so he's having to hold these play he's having to you know keep a hold of players he probably doesn't want to keep a hold of and then he's having to sign players off his own back because we don't really have a good structure in terms of footballing choices and self-directed football and whatnot. His choices haven't been the greatest. His black book isn't maybe the most extensive. And now we're in a position where he's not playing as, he's not playing attractive style of football. Our results are on shit. Our performances are shit. And now the players are starting to fall out with him. And I hate these headlines, personally. Eric Ten Hag has lost elements of the United dressing room as um, his style and treatment of Jadon Sancho is questioned. Because for me personally, I feel like these players have gotten away with fucking murder. And as much as I hate Eric Ten Hag and I think he's a fucking shit coach and I would sack him tomorrow if I could or today, I would much rather see half of that team sold, contracts terminated before Eric Ten Hag gets sacked. I would rather see those players leave before he gets that because those players have thrown every single manager under the bus 
post Silas Ferguson. And some of these players have no right to have that much power over the club, considering that they've not won anything. They've not achieved anything in the game. And some of them are fucking shit anyway as players. Why the fuck are you having any say so on what managers we have and how long they fucking are? I fucking hate it. So this is courtesy of Sky Sports News. So I guess it's some sort of reliable source inside the dressing room leaking information, which always seems to happen whenever we're losing. Suddenly these players want to start talking. It says, Eric Ten Hag has lost elements of the dressing room at Manchester United with players questioning his playing style and treatment of Jadon Sancho. A group of players are becoming disenchanted um, uh, with the Dutchman after the slump to a 1-0 abject performance against Newcastle. One source has claimed that Ten Hag has lost 50% of the dressing room, which is refusal to act on concerns voiced by United players. Which makes sense, to be fair. Like, I think even Ajax fans, before he joined our club... Ajax fans were telling us online that Eric Ten Hag is incredibly stubborn. He doesn't change his mind. He doesn't change his ways. So when he has his favourites, he keeps playing them. When he wants to play a particular way, he will keep playing it. And that's it. He's not going to change his ways. And we've seen it basically going forward. That's what that's been one of the most frustrating parts of Eric Ten Hag's tenure so far. His inability to change um, based on the evidence kind of presented to him. It continues. We should make it clear that it's very easy to kick a club when they're down. It's easy to kick Eric Ten Hag when he's done. It's really easy to say he's lost the dressing room and that the players are not playing for him. Oh my God. Look at our next fixtures. These are some very tough fixtures. We're playing Chelsea away. No, playing Chelsea at home. Bournemouth at home. Bayern Munich at home in the Champions League. By that time, we probably might have been knocked out of Champions League. Liverpool at, um, away, which is going to be... That might be the way Eric Ten Hag gets fired. I think most of our coaches... Um, a heavy loss to Liverpool usually has a very devastating effect on their tenure. So if we lose to our fucking bitter local rivals, then there is a chance that Eriksen Hall gets sacked by then. But again, I would much rather see half of that squad get fired or get sacked or get terminated and see him leave first. But that is going to be a brutal game. Then we've got West Ham on the 23rd of December at, away. And then we've also got new um, Aston Villa on Boxing Day at home. Jesus Christ. Anyway, it continues. My information is that some of the players are confused with what is happening. He has lost elements of the dressing room. One source tells me that he has lost 50% of the dressing room. Quite a few players are unhappy with the style of play. They also feel like the training is too hard. <laughs> I fucking hate our players. The training is too hard, they're saying. They're running too much during training. Oh my fucking God. These absolute prima donnas. Training is too hard and we're running too much. I was told the players don't know what they're what they're running for. <laughs> what cunts? I fucking hate them all. Honestly, if I could if I could line up all of our players on a fucking wall and pull out a blicky, I fucking would. Honestly. It continues. Also, some senior players have spoken to Eric Ten Hag about where they feel the club is going wrong. They spoke to him about their other experiences of playing for big clubs. Who is that then? Only players that play for big clubs are Varane and fucking Casemiro. Really? Who else has got something to say? Fucking cunts. They've spoken to him about their experience to play for big clubs. They feel like the manager should be a little bit more touchy-feely. Oh, my God. Oh, Jerry Sancho thing continues. They feel his management could be a little bit better. Brayton Hag is the boss and he's the one who calls the shots. He is not for turning. He is going to do things his way. I've also been told that a few of the players believe that he is too set in his ways and he's too robotic. <laughs> These players are fucking cunts, I swear to God. They really are, man. They don't even run. They don't even, like, forget not being good enough. Like, it's one thing not being good enough. It is what it is, right? You can only play within your, you know, within your range of your abilities, your God-given abilities or whatever abilities you work on. But what we ask for as fans is effort. Effort. Effort, bro. Just run. Put an effort in. Put a tackle in. Show that you care about the fucking badge. You care about the club. Or just put your all into the performance. If you don't care about the club, just clock in like you're at work and put your all into performance. They don't even do that. Fucking hell. I've also been told a few players believe that he's too to set in his ways and too robotic. Um, Ten Hag has also lost support of dressing room over his ongoing standoff with Sancho. So Sancho at the moment is having an ongoing beef with fucking Eric Ten Hag. He's kind of currently changing with, I think, with the youth team, isn't it? With the kids. The funny thing is, according to some people, he's training with the youth team, so he's been banished for the first team, and allegedly, it's it's basically illegal for him to change in a dressing room with the kids because I think they're under eighteen, so he has to change in a, in his car before he trains with the youth team. 
Imagine how embarrassing it is as a senior player because he can't be in the dressing room with him because it'd be, it'll be some pedo shit. So he has to change in the fucking car before he goes to play with the kids in the fucking training pitch later on. Absolutely horrendous treatment from him, man. Um, a few of the players um, are also unhappy with Jalen Sancho has been treated. He's got people in the dressing room who are close to him and he's been totally frozen out because he refuses to apologize to Eric Ten Hag. He's training with the kids and he's eating on his own. Quite a few of the players feel like it's gone too far. Of course it has, man. Um, but again, it's it, I don't really blame Eric Ten Hag. He's got his fucking, you know, issue. he's got his issue with, with fucking Jalen Sancho, whether they, I bleed them or not, whatever. I feel like if you're at a big club, a big club should have stepped in by now. They should have stepped in and said, hey, you either have to sort this issue out, come to a resolution, or he gets sold. You don't just leave him, you know, in the lurches, banished from the club, especially a player of, the, of his caliber, of his profile, just fucking, you know, not playing at all. Like, it's just not going to, especially considering how popular he's in the dressing room, it's not the way to forward. They should have sold him instantly or they should have acted as a middleman and come to, and made them both sit together in a room and sort their issues out. That's what I think should have happened. He's training with the kids and eating on his own. Quite a few players feel like he's gone too far. They're always unhappy people in the dressing room, but when you're losing games, there are even more of them. So the players are saying they're running too much. I can't believe that quote, bro. That is honestly shambolic and shameless. Quite a few of the players are unhappy with the style of play. They also feel like they are training too hard and running too much during training. Fuck you all. Fuck you all. I fucking hate our players. I hate the club. And I can't wait for it all to be fucking burnt to the ground, to be fair. I'd much rather us get relegated and have these glazers be bled completely dry and then leave than us qualify for the fucking Champions League or anything. I don't care. The club is so rotten that it needs a complete reset. It really does need a radical reset. But the reset it needs is for it to get relegated. These players all need to get fucking booed out. Because remember, we get relegated, they're all leaving. When we get relegated, if it ever happens and their wages get cut, none of these players are going to stay for the badge. All these players that profess to love the club, they won't stay. If they have to get their wages cut by 20%, 30%, 40%, they'll all leave. Because man, that is a good fucking payday for a lot of these guys. Sack the fucking club, get us relegated to the fucking championship and start again. Honestly, start again. And if tomorrow I hear news that the Glazers helicopter fucking crashed into the mountain, I will be clapping. I will be doing fucking backflips down the street. I'll be so happy about that if that happened, you know? Not wishing it, of course, but if it happened... I wouldn't give a fuck. I really wouldn't. I swear to God, I really wouldn't. Because those guys have absolutely destroyed my fucking club. And the sooner they leave, the better. The sooner they fucking leave, the better. I swear to God. The sooner they leave, the absolute better. So, whatever. It kind of is what it is. It kind of is what it is. Um, moving on from this, and the last thing I want to talk about now is Louis Vuitton's pre fall collection. For our second collection for Louis Vuitton, after taking over from the great and the illustrious Virgil Abloh um, due to his unfortunate passing. And from the first glance, it's kind of looking a bit samey. It looks like he might have been a bit of a one-trick pony. That first collection was pretty decent. First debut, especially with him not being a trained designer in any way, shape or form. I don't think he's done a full collection since the heady days of Billionaire's Boys Club. So that was all right. But so far from the pictures that I've seen on Vogue, which I'm going to be browsing over now, it seems like that first collection was it. And now it just looks a bit shit. I'm not going to lie. Very samey, very kind of basic. Maybe some good accessories. I'm looking at some of the looks now. And it looks very, 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 very mediocre. I'm not going to lie. I think it was hosted in Hong Kong somewhere. I think that's where the pre fall collection was done. Um, the setting looks kind of awesome. It looks like it's somewhere. Is it on a bridge or like on a boat somewhere? The background looks amazing. It looks like it's on a river somewhere. So obviously an international show. Hong Kong being a big market for Louis Vuitton. I completely get that. But the look so far. You could take a lot of these looks and put them into the first collection that he did and it would look pretty cool. Maybe because it's a pre fall that probably makes the reason why it's like this, but it looks kind of terrible. I'm not going to lie. It looks very, 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 very average, very terrible. Um, there's a lot of fucking, you know, Nautica influences going on there with the shirts and some of the shape of the, of the jackets and stuff and the hats and whatnot. But there's not a lot here that I would wear. I'm not going to lie. A lot of it's very samey. I'm seeing a lot of the same double-breasted jacket. I'm seeing a lot of the same hat. I'm seeing a lot of the same cut of pants. I'm seeing a lot of the same socks with the with the 
with Mary Jane, socks with the fuck, stacked socks with the Mary Jane, stacked socks with the loafers they did in the first collections. That that baseball jacket is pretty hard. I'm not gonna lie. I like that leather jacket here and look number 22 and 23 are probably some of my favorites I've seen so far. But apart from that, it's all very ordinary. Like a lot of this stuff is very very shit. And I think maybe it's the evidence of just how hard it is to do this kind of job. The amount of fucking the amount of collections you have to put out on a daily is probably hard, isn't it? Really hard. Pre four collaborations in between, you know, pre collections, normal ready to wear collections, plus the collaborations, plus the accessories. It's a lot of shit to put out. And this yeah, this even the second half, the the other half of the show, from looks number thirty onwards, like, what the fuck is all this stuff? Like, what is this? Some of this floral design, the stripes, the jackets, the shirts, like it's really bad, man. Really, really bad. And it's surprising. It's fallen off so quickly. I would have thought it would have taken some time to get to this level. I didn't think it would have fallen off this quickly. I thought it would have been, you know, a, a, a steady decline. But it looks like already, after the first collection, it's already fallen off the cliff. And I'm not seeing a lot of people post about it on social as well. It's a good sign that people aren't really rocking. Like, come on, man. Like, what? This is very H&M. This is definitely, definitely H&M. From this look onwards, 54... You know, 55 is definitely H&M. Like, what the sh What the fuck is this shit? Horrendous. Really, really bad. There's not a, There's not much, like... And then at the end, here he is with the hats. It's like, this is awful, man. His outfit's actually nice here on 65. His own outfit. But the rest of it is really, really bad. I don't like any of it. Zero. Zero. Zero of this stuff is good. It all looks kind of terrible. Wow, I'm actually surprised how ordinary it all looks. I'm not going to lie. But maybe I should be surprised. Maybe that is the difference of hiring somebody that's actually a, an actual designer. Or who's, maybe an actual designer. Maybe someone that's just like currently in the trenches, you know, pu putting out collections. Maybe you have a little bit more in your arsenal. You have a little bit more to draw from. Someone like him who's, you know, again, making collab doing collaborations and capture collections here and there. I just don't think it's enough momentum and output and motion to carry over to doing ready to wear right or, or designing for a luxury house like this like especially to the level of output that they want because essentially how many collections are you designing a year maybe six if you include all the pre-collections without the collaborations it might be six collections he's putting together and even if he's not designing and sketching them all himself he still has to do some bit of leadership some bit of input has to be given into the stuff so that's a lot of collections to put out a year six minimum probably or maybe let's say four to be safe four collections per year for someone that wasn't doing much that's a lot of shit and it's showing that you know it's hard to make something fresh and this is not fresh at all this looks very samey um yeah not a fan of this in the slightest not for me let's quickly read the review here courtesy of vogue let's see what they're saying they're probably not going to give the realness they're probably going to suck his ass on this let's see what they're saying here a swarm of illuminated drones hovered high above hong kong's victoria harbor at pharrell's first louis vuitton menswear pre-fall show etching momentary patterns in the sky first they synchronized to illustrate a rising blue wave and pushing the ri uh, the riderless white surfboard uh da -da -da, wave broke out and the surfboard transformed into a traditional junk boat at the kind that was piled these waters for centuries maritime female established the drones scattered to reform a designer's um, lv motif so they had drones above the thing okay cool um and so low shu hiru and dylan wang stray kids felix and rao alejandro 600 vic's and around 200 of hong kong fashion students were watching on a big screen we were invited to see the collection and contained many complex currents of its own. Okay, that's a pretty cool little thing with the students and shit. Theme-wise, the main dialogue ran the characters of Dandy Sailor at the beginning and the earthier surfer tool. <laughs> what, is, what is the connection between a sailor and a surfer apart from the seas, stylistically? No wonder it looks all over the place. The muse was a, was a sailor and a surfer. Among the many super enjoyable elements of the wavy uh of the wave your end were the intensely mustard hawaiian style prints and the aloha shirts and the short sets so vogue is definitely lying vogue is saying some of the worst things in that collection were the best things 
Jesus Christ. A suede shawl and shirt set in red was garland with a wide edge flowers who could arrange according to your mood. And they were, uh, what's it? They were beaded shorty sweat wetsuits and ponchos in neoprene, friendship bracelets and necklaces and rattan shirts and fisherman sandals. I'd love to know how much a Louis Vuitton Pharrell designed friendship bracelet is going to go for. I'd love to know. Um, around and also sometimes within its fun, frothing churn of the luxury surfology, Williams's LV lexicon began to take shape. Pearls as milky as the moonlight ripped denim rivets, um, rivets, top buttons and etched pinstripes on seersucker were the precious pixels that traced the floral waves and the fish on the closing baseball jacket. The, yeah just so much gas here the lv initials um resemble the grid of the fishing net in the silk so shit the colorless coat not quite rattan coat and the same milky tone of the pearl buttons the high-waisted double-breasted jackets and uh what's that the breaky pants and the wide shorts Neptune God of the Ocean was inserted into one of the Aloha prints as the join dots and the Easter eggs for the Pharrell files. Um, accessories provided the tide of the uh, that propels Louis Vuitton. Uh, they were given due prominence this evening. Tweaked version of the Speedy and a new chest bag were among the models printed in bicolor checkerboard versions of the Damier design, taken from the archive's original uh, design, retaining the first hand brushed identifier. Those Elvia lower prints landed here too. At the end of it all, those drones made for public, made for such a res irresistible content that some in the 1,200 strong crowd shifted from their spots and apparently to gain an improved shooting position this current then swelled against the finales ensemble the waves and blah, 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 blah. okay cool so virgo lying and saying it's good but it's been fucking shit I, I i don't like anything from this to be fair um maybe some of the except maybe a stretch some of the accessories look cool the double-breasted suit jackets maybe you can make something of that but jesus christ this is very ordinary already and i really don't understand stylistically why you know what fucking navy and surface like what can like what the hell is going on here navy surface okay so like i don't understand what any of this stuff is and what it means and what it's basically doing for the story that he's trying to tell here like even this look look number 30 like what does this what does that belong here what, what does that have to do with being a surfer like stylistically it just looks all over the place like a baseball jacket like, i don't know it all looks fucking horrendous like it definitely is, looks like top shop h&m level of branding this chest bag is absolutely awful um the print on this suit set this lower suit is garbage but i can definitely see j balvin wearing this this is definitely j balvin's vibe like lots of unnecessary gaudy colors and patterns and stuff j balvin's gonna be all over this shit but for me personally, it's absolutely horrendous. And if anything, it's such an epic fall off from the first collection. Like it really is. One one decent collection. And then to this, it's like, wow, what an epic fall off. But yeah, no surprise there. No real surprise there. Anyways, I'm going to love you and leave you. This has been the Agostino Zinger Show, episode number 729. Thank you so much for tuning in. It's been a pleasure to have your company. It really flipping has. If you've enjoyed the show and you loved what you hear, you heard what you said, whatever it may be, and you're listening via the audio side of the podcast, please leave me a five-star review on all the platforms you listen to podcasts. That'd be greatly appreciated. If you're watching live via the live stream, of course, what you can do is leave me a like down below. That would also be appreciated. And if you listen via the audio podcast, you will hear my tune of the day playing underneath my voice. So make sure you enjoyed that. Details of the tune today can be found in the description and also links to all the stuff I spoke about. But until then, thank you for tuning in. It's been a pleasure, never a chore. I'll see you guys again very, very soon.